Welcome to the Poplar Assembly of God. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. Everybody standing. Let's worship Him. Lift Him up. Amen. Somebody make a joyful noise. Praise, give him a shout. All oh, praise, praise. And 
He's ready to be praised in the place. The Bible says, so let the congregation of the Lord say so. Let the congregation worship him. Oh, just give it a wave off and all over this place. He's a 
Almighty God. How many believe it this morning? Shout yes. Somebody shout, he's mighty. Someone shout, Holy Ghost. Somebody shout, fire. Oh, he's here this morning. Give him one more hand of praise. Give him one more shout. How many glad you're in the house of the Lord this morning? How many glad that you have come to receive? How many are ready to receive from the Lord? Shout, I am.
First of all, it says he giveth. Everybody say giveth. God is a giving God. God, he says, he's, he's so, uh, uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God is a giver. He's the one that gave us that life. So uh, when he's talking about he, it means God, our, our father. He says, he giveth power. Everybody shout power. Now sometimes we don't feel too powerful, but do we realize that we have the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ? One more time, somebody shout power. Look to your neighbor in the face and shout power. All right. Oh, now we should all be powerful, sharing that power one with another. Now the word power comes from a Greek word, uh, 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 Greek word dunamis. Everybody say dunamis. And that's the word where we uh, uh, get the word dynamo and dynamic. Now the word dynamic, we, we have the, the, the term dynamic in music. Dynamics are part of music. When, when uh, we're playing at a low level, you know, uh, piano level or, or, or uh, mezzo piano, is that right? And then forte, all right. What's a, what's a forte? Loud. All right. So we are going to demonstrate. And, and, and what's, the, what's the quiet one? What's a quiet one? Piano, right? Pianissimo? Piano? Which one? Piano. Okay, all right. Okay, it's, it's piano. Okay, so that's soft. Forte is loud. So at the count of three, we're going to shout forte. Okay, we're going to shout. We'll shout Holy Ghost. Okay, one, two, three. Ah, uh, uh, that wasn't loud enough. Here we go. That was like forte. It's got to be loud. One, two, three. Holy Ghost. Okay. All right. All right. Now, now we're going to, at the soft level, we are, we are just going to say Jesus quiet in, in, the, in the dynamics of the low level. Okay. At the count of three, we're going to say Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus. Cool. Okay. Now, now, the, now there, are, uh, there are different levels of dynamics. And so it, when, when, the, when we are look at the word power, that word power is dynamics. We have dynamics in our lives. How many know there are some exciting times that we go through? Something awesome happens. We get excited. We're happy. We're shouting. We're, we're jumping. We're spinning. And, and so we're excited about this. But then also there's some low times in our life. How many have ever been at those low times? Those times when we go through and we're at our lowest time, Sometimes we don't feel like jumping or shouting. We don't feel like making a noise. But here, here we are at our lowest time. But the, we're talking about the power of God. And aren't you glad that God is a God of the low times. And he's a God of the high times. He's a God when things are going good. He's a God when things are going bad. He is right there. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He's there when things are going good. He's there when you're going through those valleys. How many glad he's here in the name of Jesus? How I'm glad that he's with you every step of the way. When you're down in the valley, he's right there. When you're being attacked, when you're being talked about, when you're being put down, he's still the God of the miracle. He's still a God of the mountain. He will still bring you out when you're stuck in that rut. He's there to bring you out because he's a powerful God. He's a mighty God. That's the power of God. He is here. Aren't you glad we have that power? Somebody shout, power! He said, he giveth power to the faint. Anybody ever fainted before? Anybody ever fainted? We got to define that word because it shows up again. The word right before, you can always tell when someone's going to faint. I mean, uh, <laughs> because uh, th there's things that start to happen. They start to look a little different. <laughs> right before someone faints, you talk to them and they're... Kind of unaware of what's going on. What's happening, man? And all of a sudden, you start to, oh, something's happening. Oh, there they go. How many have ever seen those videos of people on roller coaster rides or carnival rides and they pass out? Anybody ever watch those? If you haven't, check it out. If you're having a bad day, watch them. It'll bring a little bit of joy to you. <laughs> it's, and it's crazy. We've watched a ton of them. And, you can, and most of the time, uh, there's a girl and a guy in, in those videos. Guess who passes out? The guy. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> uh, I don't know what that says about us, guys. We try to be tough. We try to be whole. And then all of a sudden, no. we lose it. <laughs> so, but there are some things, there are some characteristics before someone faints. And, 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 and they start getting weak. And that's part of it. It's uh, before someone faints, they start getting a sense of weakness. And that's what, that's at that point. When we feel like we're getting weak, when we're about to go down, God says he will give power to you when you feel like going down. He said he will give you power to raise up and stand back on your feet when you feel like you're about to go down. When those things are surrounding you, all of a sudden you can sense all those things uh, oppressing you and pushing you down. And you feel like you're about to check out. God's power is going to intervene in your situation. God's power is going to ignite you and he's going to bring you back up. You might feel like you're at their lowest point but God is going to reach down and pick you up how many glad we serve a powerful God here today he's a mighty God he's a powerful God and he's here today he said power to the faint and everybody say and remember that word and means in addition to look at your neighbor and say there's more you see when God does something he just doesn't finish. He keeps on going. He keeps on working. If God has answered a prayer in your life, get ready. He's going to answer another one. If you've had a miracle in your life, get ready. He's going to do another miracle in your life. Oh, if someone's gotten saved in your family, get ready. Someone else is going to get saved. Oh, if someone has come back to the Lord, get ready. Someone's going. It's in addition to he's going to do more and more. Someone shout more. He's here. In addition to, and to them that have no might, he increaseth the strength. Increaseth is, a, uh, is, is an important word because it gets greater and greater and greater. It keeps on increasing. You know, uh, uh, when, you, when, you're, when you're jamming out in your, in, your, in your car, your vehicle, and you start, grab that volume and, and you start increasing the volume, what happens? <laughs> it causes a reaction all of a sudden no, the whole car is thumping and then you turn it back down and everybody's turn it back up what happens you see that's you're increasing the volume and when something is increased, it causes a reaction. Guess what? God is about to increase his power. He's about to increase that strength and his glory and his anointing. He's about to pour it on. How many want more of his power? How many want more of his strength? Oh, he's going to increase that strength to them that have no might. You say, you know, we can't make it on our, on our own strength. We're out of strength. We are not mighty. Sometimes we want to be mighty. We want to be strong, but in our own strength. Well, how many know we, we mess up? We give in. And our strength, well, we've done our best. Well, we can't do it. And we cannot do it by ourselves. But to him that have no might. If you're feeling here today like you have no strength. If you're here today and you're feeling like you're, you're, all your energy is gone. Well, get ready, because Jesus is about to pour it on. God is about to increase that strength and that power. It's going to get greater and greater and greater. Oh, it's not going to get, uh, even though the enemy tries to pour it on harder and harder, we serve a God that is greater than those things. We serve a God that will intervene in those situations. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. How many believe it this morning? How many believe he's greater? Someone shout greater. He said he will increase that, that, the strength to those that have no mind. Verse 30, it says, even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. How many here wish you were young again? How many glad you're still young? Come on, brother, raise your hand. Ah! <laughs> Unanimous decision on the platform here. We're still, we could still, we could still shoot that three-pointer, right? Amen, bro. But we were shooting them before they were three-pointers. <laughs> we used to shoot them, it was just two. <laughs> you get fouled, you only get two free throws. Uh, 
I'm going back and making them change all the books of my scores. <laughs> all right. But, but here, here we are. Uh, it says, the word of God says, even the youths shall, shall faint. But even though that, that you know, uh, uh, we might not be as young as we want to be, but God gives us a chance to start all over again. He gives us that strength. He says, the, the spirit of the Lord will quicken this mortal body. Quicken this mortal body. You know what the word quicken means? To make quicker. Are we feeling like we're starting to move a little bit slower? <laughs> Sit down, we get up a little bit slower. I've been trying to implement that verse. I, I try to implement it with someone I get up. I try to jump up quick. Time to get up. Oh, I jump up. Uh, I think I just hurt myself. <laughs> But he will quicken this mortal body. And I, I take God's word literally that he will give us that strength to make us quicker. And I believe that word is for somebody here today. God wants to quicken even your physical body, your mortal body. He let his spirit quicken and give you that strength that you, that, that you can uh, do things you've, you haven't been done for a long time. There is something, somebody here that because of physical limitations you haven't been able to do what you usually do. God is going to quicken your mortal body and you're going to be able to do those things that you could not do before. How many receive it this morning? Receive that word of the Lord because he's here to give you that, that, uh, that power and that anointing. There is a power here that's here to ignite your mortal body. He's here to give you that strength. It says, even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. How many know there's an attack on our young people here today? In the land here today, there's, there's, there's such an oppression, oppression upon, an attack upon the lives of our young people. God's word is saying that even the young youth shall fall. And so many times we have seen that happen. But God is releasing his anointing. He's releasing his power upon the young people. And I believe that as we have seen the young people uh, demonstrate their gifts and their talents for the Lord, that God is raising up young people to take a, a, a healing to this generation. And why is there such an attack upon this generation? One of the reasons is that I feel that God is the, that, that trumpet is going to sound in this generation. So many times in the past that, 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 that the enemy has attacked the generation. When Jesus was born, they try to wipe out that generation so that he could not be born. But how many know, oh God, Jesus was born anyway in the midst of all that oppression. He came through, he was born and went to the cross for us. And that, that attack upon that generation, he tried to wipe it out. But God pulled through. I believe that there are young people that God is going to raise up in this generation in the middle of all this darkness, in the middle of all this death. God is going to raise up young people to stand forth and say I will stand for the Lord. I hear that to speak life into this generation. There is so much death that is going on. There were young people that God is going to raise up and you're going to speak life into their lives, life into the minds and their bodies and their spirits because they have no hope. And we serve, we see a, a generation that is hopeless here today, but there is hope in Jesus Christ. There is love in Jesus Christ. There is life in Jesus Christ here today. How many believe God and praise him this morning? We got something to praise him for. That's why we're here this morning because he's a mighty God. He's a prayer answering God. He's a God of this generation. He's a God of the young. He's a God of the old. He will raise us up in this last day and this last hour. He's a God that will bring us through. He's a God. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. He will give you that strength. Nothing is impossible for the God we serve. We serve a God of the impossible. Oh, somebody stand up and praise him. Oh, somebody give him glory. Oh, he's a mighty God. He's pouring out his anointing. He's pouring out his glory and he's here. Someone shout, I receive it. Lift your hands and say, I receive it. Oh, he's a mighty God. Oh, give him one more shout. Woo! Oh, hallelujah. How many glad you came to church here this morning? Oh, look at your neighbor and say, he's not done yet. Woo! Something is stirring. Get ready. We got one more verse to go. Oh, there's more. He said, verse 31, and this is the verse. He says, but they that wait. That means that even though all these things are going on, even though all these things are happening in your life, in your family, in your body, in your emotions, 
Even all, even if all these things are happening, when you feel like fainting, he says, they that wait upon the Lord. The word wait doesn't simply mean that we got to stand there and wait. How many have ever been waited on? Oh, you go to the restaurant, you go there, and they wait on you. Today we're talking about serving God. Serving Him. We are not here for God to serve us. And for for us to order the Holy Ghost around. But we are here to serve Him. But when we serve Him, the Holy Ghost is unleashed. The Holy Ghost is released. How many want that Holy Ghost to move in this place here this morning? How many want him to move within your life? As we serve him, it says goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. Why? Because we are serving him. When you follow God, all these things will follow, fall into place. All these things will happen. But they that wait upon the Lord, he said he shall renew. Everybody say renew. And everybody knows, we have touched on this word. This word is a a major word here this year. It keeps coming up in a lot of the services. Renew means to restore. It means to rebuild. It means to renovate. Oh, those are powerful words. And as we look at uh, 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 the buildings in our homes, sometimes we've had, I've t- I shared about how uh, we've had, how many ever had their home renovated before? Oh, it, it's changed. Here's what happens. We drive by and we see all, 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 uh, all the uh, old cabinets out on the yard and wood, all kinds of things tore out, all insulation, everything, everything ripped out of there, all laid out. Why? Because they're getting ready to put in something new. They're ripping everything out to make room for the new stuff. Guess what? God wants to rip out all the old stuff in our lives. He wants to tear it out. Why? So he can get ready to do some new things in your life. To rebuild you and make you stronger. Better than you were. Sometimes we want to say, oh, we failed. God, I want to be back to where I was before. But God just, just doesn't, doesn't want you to be where you were. He wants to take you to a greater place. He wants to take you to a higher place in him. How many want to go higher with the Lord here today? How many want more of what he has? He's here so he's going to renew, rebuild, restore, renovate. Now here's, here's another aspect of renovation. In, in, the, in this process, we have, we have a, a sister that's house is about to be renovated. And so before they can do that, before they can rip out everything, they had to relocate to another area so that the renovation could take place. Sometimes God needs to move us out of the place that we are at so he can do a work within our lives. Some of you are in a place right now. God wants to move you. Some of you are hanging out with some old friends. He wants to change you. He wants to transform you. But he can't do it while you're in that present uh, state, present area, and right, the present surroundings. Some of you are hanging out in places that God cannot work in your life. He wants to change you. He wants to move you to another place so he can work on your life. He wants to move you into the house of the Lord so he can do a work within your life. He wants to take out that old and give you something new. God is stirring the land today. He's about to do something mighty, something powerful in your life. The word says that, uh, the, uh, the word called transplanted. He said he will take us like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. That word planted means transplanted. And that what that means is that there's a tree that's planted in a certain soil and he wants to up root that tree and plant it by that rivers of living waters. Some of you are planted into a place of death. God wants to plant you in a place of life. He wants to move you where you can grow. He wants to move you where you can be blessed. And while God wants you can move out into the things of God by that rivers of living waters. He, wa- he doesn't want you to die. He doesn't want you to perish. He wants to give you life. Someone shout Life! He's here to give you that life. How many want that life here this morning? He says to renew their strength. He says they shall mount up with wings as eagles. We got some eagles here this morning. Now, 
One of the things they tell us is that in a storm, you know, the eagle, eagle when, it hap- when it, the storm comes, he doesn't fight that wind. He'll begin soaring higher and higher until he gets above those clouds, above that storm, and then begin to soar. God wants to take you to a higher place. Oh, he wants to reach down and pick you up to a higher place. This morning, God wants you to become an eagle here today. Are you guys ready for some adoptions here? He wants you to become an eagle. How many want to be an eagle this morning and fly and soar where God wants you to soar? Okay. All right. If you want to soar, get your wings out. Everybody, I like this. This isn't working sitting down. Everybody stand. Everybody standing. Get ready. Because God is about, what we do in the physical, what we do in the natural happens in the supernatural. What we do in the physical happens in the spiritual. So today, God wants to do something in your life. Okay, look at your neighbor and say, give me some room, I'm about to fly. Okay, hands out, wings out. At the count of three, we're gonna fly. Here we go, one, two, three. Oh, I saw one brother really getting into it. Oh, he's flying high in the sky. One more time. One, two, three. Everybody fly. Oh, come on. Somebody shout. Oh, we're flying above those things. Oh, give yourselves a hand this morning. Come on. He's here. You can sit down for a second. All that flying, taking a lot out of you. (laughs) Remember, he'll quicken that mortal body. (laughs) I know. I saw someone really getting getting into it. Some of them were. (laughs) What was that? That ain't an eagle. (laughs) You ain't going nowhere. Okay, it says they shall run, everybody say run, and not be weary. It says they shall walk and not faint. Oh, it's getting ready. It's, we're, we're, we're headed for the altar here today. Because God is doing something. We see three levels of strength. We see three levels of motion. First, we see the flying. Sometimes we, we want to fly, but sometimes we can't. And we're pushed down to the ground. And so then we, we begin to run. We try, we try our best to run. And it feels like our strength is gone, so it's slowed down to a walk. How many ever been in a long race? How many runners have we got here? How many used to be runners? How many are just walkers now? Oh, you used to be, God, let me at him. But now it's, <sighs> but you see, we want, we, sometimes we go from flying to running to walking. And then it says, and not faint. We keep slowing down until all our strength is gone and we're about to, to fall. We're about to collapse. And we've given it all we had. And now we're thirsty. We're walking. Run for a long time. We've been flying, then we run, and now we're walking. Now we're all thirsty. <sighs> all of a sudden, anything starts looking good to drink. Uh, Oh, I need something to drink. Oh, you see a stroller over there. You grab that bottle away from that baby. <laughs> you grab that sippy cup. You start grabbing at it because you're so thirsty. You're so weak. He says, but now we're going to go back to the beginning. You see that word appears at the beginning and the end of this verse. And they shall walk and not faint. Everybody say not. 
God is encouraging you. Even though you feel like you're going to faint, even though you feel like you're going to give up, you are not. Why are we going to go back to the beginning and say, why? Because he gives the power to the faint. Oh, he gives strength unto them that have no strength. It's his power in the name of Jesus Christ. He's here in this place. He's going to do a mighty work for you and I. There is something that is stirring. He's about to pour in his strength. He's about to cause you to rise above it all here today. Let's all stand in his presence. Oh. I want you to get ready. We're going to do something different at this altar. We come up Sunday after Sunday. And I don't ever want this to be a, be a ritual, just think that something that we do. But we are truly coming with our whole hearts to, the, to this altar. And we might be trying to fly. We might be, be trying to do our best and it seems like we're slowing down. Oh, but I want you to get ready. Look at your neighbor and say, get ready. This morning, when this altar opens up, and we open this altar here today, don't take any time. Don't waste any time. But I want you to rush to this altar to receive something. Get ready. Oh, open it. This altar is open. Come around this altar. Oh, run. Come on. Run, church. Oh, come on. Oh, get to this altar. Something's about to happen. Oh, he's coming. Oh, he's all oh, Oh, he's here. He's releasing that power and that glory and that anointing. Get ready because he's right here. He's right here. He's pouring out that presence and that glory. Oh, you're feeling like fainting. You're feeling like you can't go on. He's going to pour into you that strength and that power. Oh, because some of you are at a low place right now. He's a God of the low times. Oh, he's a God of the high times. The enemy might be trying to push you down, but he's here to give you that strength. God wants to raise you up. He wants to take you by the hand and lift you up. Just reach out to him this morning. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Oh, you're a God that hears us and answers our prayer. Oh, you will cause us to rise up. Oh, yes. And we will rise up with wings as eagles. Fly high above the sky. Oh, we shall run and not be weary. Oh, we shall walk. And not vain. Oh, yes, Lord, Father, right now, will we release that power? Oh, Lord, that power that reaches down. You're a God of the impossible. Oh, there are those that are, you feel like at your, at your last drop of strength, and you feel like you can't go on. He's here to give you that power. Oh, Lord, you, you've given it all, and you feel like you're all out. He's here. He's reaching out. Oh, he's here. Just reach out and take it. Oh, he's touching somebody here today. Someone almost didn't come here today. But God has a reason for you that he might reach down and pick you up. Someone, oh, you just all of a sudden tuned in and started watching. Some of you have been watching this service. You don't know why or how. But God has a reason and for a purpose. He's going to reach down and pick you up. He's going to cause you to rise above it all. Oh, he's going to give you that power. Oh, just praise him. Oh, just thank him. Say, I receive it. I receive your power. I receive your glory. When I am weak, you will make me strong. When I can't go on, you will bring me through. Oh, you're reaching out your hand. You are here, Lord. You are here, Lord. Oh, Lord, we receive it. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, you shall run and not fail. Oh, you shall run. You shall run and not fail. Oh, you shall run. You shall. How many believe he's here? How many receive that strength? Someone shout, I got it!
You can join us every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. Poplar Assembly of God, 2 miles west, Highway 2.